Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 21 that is based on lecture number 9. Lecture number 9 is about Monte Carlo simulations and different discretization techniques that we can apply to stochastic differential equations for purpose of derivative pricing. When simulating and when discretizing stochastic processes, or for example, finding some approximations for discretization, it is also it's always very important to distinguish between weak and strong convergence. To understand, to see what is the, the, the difference between the two, let's take a look at the Monte Carlo path. So, so suppose we have some uh, time horizon, this is time here t, we have uh, paths, so let's call it X, process x t, we simulate some paths from starting point until, let's say, expiry of our European type of option, and this option will expire here. So this is the point. So as we see that if we have, uh, let me make it nicer density, if we are considering a payoff that only that depends on a marginal distribution at capital time t, so only distribution matters, it doesn't matter what paths are there or what is the order of them, then we talk about weak convergence. So weak convergence is always, I always say, it's always at a given time, distribution at that given point. However, if you talk about a payoff that also depends not only on a distribution on a time, but depends on paths, so it depends on the transition densities, how those densities move in time. So if you have one density here and also another density here, and we also, that our payoff would depend on the transition between the two, then we talk about strong convergence. Strong convergence, you can say it's a horizontal line, vertical line is the one which corresponds to the weak convergence. So let's formalize. So if we have a discretized process, so we have discretized stochastic differential equation, then we define um, the, the, the error for the strong sense. Strong convergence is defined as an expectation because we are dealing always with Monte Carlo simulations. So we talk about expectations. Then we have corresponding Monte Carlo path. At this is at time, so this t here, it is actually t m. So this is the final point, and then minus our exact value of this process, so theoretical value at also this point. And then we have uh, uh, this has to be of O delta um, delta t alpha. So what is important here is that you see that we are looking at the expectation of differences. And then we have this absolute value here. These differences taking place at the path level. So you see, for every path of our approximation versus, uh, versus the exact solution, we'll be always comparing them at the path level. So each of the individual paths between proxy and exact, so let's do it like this, proxy and our exact will be compared. And this difference between on the path level will determine what is the order of convergence. If we talk about a weak convergence, it is a slightly different because we see we are dealing not this absolute value is not here. We are looking at the absolute value outside. So this absolute value is taken outside. Then we talk about weak convergence. So we see actually there will be expectation of differences. Of course, expectations linear. So this uh, we can go, we can divide or we end up with a summation or difference of two expectations. So you see here, if we look at the absolute value of two expectations, then in this case, we are not looking at the path level. We just look at the whole distribution. So if we have European options, it doesn't really matter. As long as the distributions are the same, it doesn't matter what paths, which paths are the order of paths or where they are, it doesn't really matter. The distribution only matters. And then we are talking about weak convergence. Obviously, if we are considering a case where we have a strong convergence, it also implies weak convergence. However, small error in your weak convergence, it does not imply strong convergence. This means that if you have perfect pricing of two models for European type of options, and they are matching perfectly for European type of options, it doesn't mean that they will match the pricing of exotic derivative that depends on Monte Carlo paths. So then, this path dependent is actually will kick in here, and then we are having differences in exotics. So it's also very logical. So if we talk about a week, always think of distributions at given time. So I always say it's a, a, a vertical line. It, if we talk about strong convergence, we always talk about a, a horizontal line. This means on the path level. So let's take a look further. So if, how to measure this error? Uh, now, of course, 
with, with in this formulation here, it maybe sounds a little bit theoretical because here this xt process is exact process, exact value. And this is not always available. So we can always measure it for simple processes, but not always we have this solution for xt uh, explicit for more advanced models. So uh, now we take a look at the error in a weak sense. So we have absolute value of expectations of paths. And here we have uh, for the exact part, so exact uh, representation. And here we have a, a discretization, all the Euler discretization. So this part will correspond to this term because in, for example, in a Black-Scholes case, so this is always easy to analyze uh, convergence for simple models. And then we have, we know that for uh, geometric brown motion, we have ex exact solution. So we can simply substitute this solution into here. So we have S zero, and then we plug it in this uh, uh, exponent here. And of course, this part is constant. We could actually take it even outside, but well, let's leave it like this. And then we have a corresponding Brownian motion. And the same here. So this step comes from uh, uh, exact simulation. And this part comes from our Euler discretization. So this is, this is the, the difference. And what is very important is that uh, here for the exact solution, if you want to compare other path level, you cannot simply uh, sample Brownian motions for this part and then Brownian motions for this part. You need to have consistency. So we need to have exactly the same Brownian motion for both cases, for either exact solution or Euler discretization. This is very important because otherwise we will those results will not be uh, comparable. So like it says here, if the Brownian motions wouldn't be the same, we wouldn't be able to measure the strong convergence because then we are the inputs will not correspond already to the strong convergence. So we will not get any uh, path, any result, uh, any reasonable results. And here is the results for the Euler discretization. So what we have seen here on the left hand side, we see uh, uh, paths from Euler discretization versus the exact paths that we can obtain using the exact formula, which is presented in the previous slide. And you see on the path level, some of those paths, they're very close, the exact versus uh, approximation. If the stock goes high, you see that these differences become more significant. For low stocks, uh, those differences are very small. So this is interesting to see. And then if we uh, substitute, so for varying delta t, because we, in the convergence, we always talk about convergence in terms of a, a time step. So we have a discretization. And the question is, if we discretize delta t, uh, make a grid narrower, what is the impact on our error? That's the key element of this uh, convergence analysis. Because if we have this delta t going to zero, being zero, then of course, the results will be very close. However, the problem would be that our discretization uh, for small delta t, so if the delta t goes to zero, the pro practical problem is that it requires a lot of computational effort cost to evaluate this model. So always practically, there is an objective of having as few, as big steps as possible. So we call it often exact simulation or large steps simulation. So if you have a, a Bermudan option, which have, let's say, five callable dates in a period of 30 years, you don't want to simulate anything in between. You prefer to have large time steps only on the observable, on the five uh, points where you have the uh, exercise possibility, and the rest is essentially not used in evaluation of the payoff. Therefore, it is always the key element is to have uh, large time steps. And if you have a method, discretization method, that allows you for large time steps without cost in terms of uh, accuracy, that's always beneficial. And this is also all this convergence analysis about how much large time steps we can do while having accurate results. So if we look back here, if we perform now this simulation for varying delta t, so here for this Euler discretization for black shoals, we see that we have uh, this red line corresponds to the weak convergence. So that's kind of easy. And then we have a strong convergence. Uh, uh, this is the blue line of this shape. And if we look at the definition of our error, so this is the, uh, the for the strong convergence, um, then you can actually see that this re resembles uh, a square root type of shape here. So it is, we, we see it's actually this constant doesn't really matter. It's a multiplier, um, multiplier, but this shape resembles a square root. 
Therefore, for Euler discretization, this is the order. So it's a square root of delta time step. This is the order for this uh, particular discretization. And of course, if we deal with uh, Milstein discretizations of any other discretizations, in some cases, you can perform this uh, uh, um, analysis explicitly, uh, like here in the Black-Scholes case. Uh, for all more advanced stochastic differential equations, this analysis is difficult as it depends not only on the stochastic differential equations, but also on the discretization method. So those two elements uh, make the theoretical derivations rather um, advanced and requiring quite some effort. Um, the most important takeaway of this question is the difference between weak and strong in the sense of a pricing of derivatives. So think of, uh, again, of a horizontal, horizontal uh, when we talk about uh, a strong convergence and vertically once we, once we talk about weak convergence and when it is important. It is not always important to have a strong convergence if, for example, you're only interested in pricing of a, a plain vanilla or products that only depend on a distribution at given time. Otherwise, you need to also have strong convergence. So this is the most important. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye.